never be forgotten. She embodied a superhero, unlike where there's multiple people that have played Superman and Batman over the years, there's really only one Wonder Woman to anybody's eyes. I have to say Wonder Woman really shaped my life, and I really like her. I like Wonder Woman. I, um, I like to be Wonder Woman. You know, I got to play her, but I, I, I kind of like her as much as everybody else does, and I think she's an inspiration. And it was a blast. I had something of a reputation uh, as a master of camp in Hollywood. I had, when I was still a kid at ABC in the program department, come up with the idea of putting a comic strip on television. I was having lunch one day with Jerry Leiter, who ran Warner Brothers Television, and he said, you know, I've always loved Wonder Woman. And I said, Jerry, so have I. What can we do about her? And he said, well, we'd like to develop the show with you uh, and the right people involved and get it on the air. ABC is interested. Are you interested? I leapt at it. Most superhero characters are male, as this was even more true when uh, Wonder Woman got started in 1941, which was just shortly after Superman and Batman had been introduced. After Superman first came out, there was a plethora of heroes. That's when Charles Moulton came up with Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman was created by a man named William Moulton Marston. He was best known as a psychologist for his contributions to, to inventing the lie detector. He got a job working for a magazine where he had a column every month. This led him to be involved with a company called All American Comics, which is now DC Comics. He proposed a female superhero, which had never been done before. And in doing it, he put in a lot of his ideas from other areas. He was interested in ancient culture, and he used Greek and also Roman mythology sort of mixed together. He based his character on the myth of the Amazon. According to him, they were all living on a magical island somewhere far away. And Wonder Woman was an Amazon who was sent to aid America during World War II. Here's a character where they have a chance to do it in sort of our modern day, but they decided let's gonna make it very true to the roots of the comic book, where this is a story that took this character from essentially a fantasy land lost to time and pulled that character into our real world when we were in a time of turmoil, which of course is, you know, the time of World War II when Wonder Woman first appeared in 1941. He brought in some of his psychological theories about dominance and submission. There's a great deal of people being tied up in the stories. Wonder Woman had a magic lasso which she could use to compel people to tell the truth and this was obviously a reference to the lie detector that he'd invented years earlier. Now tell me about Peter Knight. I have nothing. He is working for us. Everyone wanted the Wonder Woman, the ideal Wonder Woman, to have a certain resemblance, obviously, to the cartoon character. That we needed a large woman, a statuesque woman, a buxom woman, and an angelic face. And beyond all that, we needed someone that could play it, could act and sustain a television movie and a series, hopefully, that would run for a long time. I had been going on a lot of interviews for any part that was out there, along with all of the 70s stars from Kate Jackson and Jacqueline Smith and Lindsay Wagner. We all ended up on this fair faucet, all in the same couple of little itty-bitty parts that were out there for women at the time. There was this search on for Wonder Woman, and I had done a screen test for uh, Larry Gordon, Lawrence Gordon, uh, on a, another movie that was never made. Douglas Kramer saw that film. When I walked in, I did didn't have to do those horrible cold readings. We we're just going to go ahead and test you. Oh, oh my God! You know, so that was pretty thrilling. And uh, immediately went on a diet. And, you know, the, the million worrying about your waistline and your hips and everything else. And.
and I went and bought everything I could buy on Wonder Woman that was out there and discussed it with some actor friends and how I wanted to pursue it, how I wanted to play it, and I did the screen test with Lyle Wagner. It seemed like it was years before I got the call, but it was probably only a couple of weeks, and, um, and I was cast. The problem is when you're creating myth, everyone has their own vision of that myth. So to sit with a director, with myself as a producer, with Warner Brothers executives, and then the network executives, and come close to everyone's feeling about Wonder Woman was a very difficult task. Whoever we found seemed to have part of the whole equation. They looked good in clothes, or they were a wonderful actress, um, but usually if they looked good in clothes, they couldn't act. Or if they were a wonderful actress, they approached the job like a lady truck driver. And Douglas Kramer had to fight for me uh, because they just thought I was too green and that I didn't have enough experience and they were afraid of casting um, any female in a leading role, let alone one that didn't have any experience. Her casting may have been the best casting in history for television or film at that point. She is truly the best embodiment of that character from the comics made flesh. Uh, there was nothing off about her. She was perfectly that face. The beauty and sensitivity and really this the quality of her looking like a heroic figure as well as her looking like the all-American girl. All these things are brought to bear in the way she is. I feel lucky that I was discovered by Douglas Kramer for Wonder Woman. It was really the first big thing that I ever did. As far as Hollywood was concerned, I was completely unknown. The universe sort of conspired to let me live my dream. Our Diana is strictly business, but maybe, just maybe, one of these days, you'll get tired of missing all the fun. And when that happens, I'd love to be around. You will be, Major. That's a promise. When it came to casting Linda's co-star, once she was set, there really was one overwhelming choice in Hollywood in those days, and it was Lyle Wagner. There was an essential quality to Lyle of gee whiz, and just as Linda had her essential naivete, he had his essential gee whiz that worked. I think that it took a lot of moxie on Lyle Wagner's part to play this role. Tall, great looking, he had played second banana to Carol Burnett. He had been doing that and was fine with it and uh, was able to poke fun at himself. Nothing to worry about, Wonder Woman. We handled this all on our own for a change. And I was so busy, to tell you the truth, playing two roles. I didn't have a lot of time to share with Lyle. If there's a regret that I do have, it's that I didn't know him uh, better than I did. Wonder Woman was that outfit to begin with, and it had to be perfect. I can't tell you how many times we looked at it, looked at fabrics, looked at different cuts, how they looked on Linda, how they moved and operated, but we were there every day getting it right. The Wonder Woman, she was dressed in this red, white, and blue costume. We're so familiar with it now, we almost don't see that that's what it is. It's the American flag, and that she was wrapped in the American flag, literally, to um, be a patriotic force during World War II, and this was part of the appeal of the character. The only thing I was a little bit taken aback by, this is pre-Madonna, you have to understand, were the sort of bullet breasts, you know. <laughs> Woman did it before Madonna did it, and that sort of threw me a little bit. And when Don Feld redid the costume after the first season, they weren't quite as pronounced. It felt like a second skin. I really didn't feel too self-conscious. Oddly, I mean, now that you know, you mention it, I should have. But you know, don't forget this was the. Um, ban the bra time, this was uh, sexual freedom time, this was bikinis and midriffs, and that was the timing 
And I really wasn't thinking about being sexy either. Here's this woman, a very gorgeous woman, running around half naked essentially, wearing pretty much a swimming outfit, and somehow she comes across as not being ultra sexual. And in fact, she is the symbol to young women or women of any age as not being defiled by that exposure. Essentially, the character was taken as what the character's meant to be, as an object of energy and motion, not as of corrupted sexuality or something that is just, you know, for the boys. It was an image that I never worked for in terms of the character. She never thought she was all that. You'd be surprised at how many women ask me for their husbands. Uh, or boyfriends and they're not they don't feel threatened by me because that's not what I was about the special effects on Wonder Woman were uh, um, I think a real collaboration Leonard Horn, who was the first director, was going to be establishing the bracelets, the changeover into Wonder Woman, and there were a lot of conversations about that, and um, many of them not with me. And when we got on the set one morning, uh, they were going to lock off a camera and try to see what they could do with that. And I, I said to the director, well, you know, I could spin, you know, I could, you know, I took a lot of dancing, and so I'll just do like a, like a pirouette, you know, with your arms out. To the side. He said, show me, and I, I did it, and he said, that's it. You like? Subscribe!